What's up, capoeiristas? And no capoeiristas, or should we say Capoeira Nation? Welcome back. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. So on this episode, I have to break it down two parts. Okay, this is going to be the first part with Professor Malandro. Okay, we had a great, awesome conversation. I learned so much, man. I learned so much. So stay, in, stay until the end for you to learn more, way, way more about Capoeira Regional. I learned so much, so much. Um, during this this first part, we talk about uh, a little bit about Professor Manandro's uh, Capoeira story, a little bit how he went transition from uh, he started and how he finished uh, uh, he finished uh, uh, transitioning to Capoeira you know, with Filos Gibimba, with Mr. Neneo. Uh, when he went to visit Mr. Bimba's academy, feeling the energy where everybody move around and feeling the energy of capoeira and just be so open so nice uh also so uh we also talk about some of the traditions of capoeira you know uh we also talk about the ways of mainstream Bimba teaching or his tradition of teaching and we also talk about uh how mr bimba did the bachisados how he he set up the stu his students to the bachisado it was amazing conversation uh, this is going to be the part number one next week is going to be part number two so stay, yeah, stay. stay tuned in for these next two episodes this one and next because the the conversation was awesome uh, i highly recommend uh, listening all the way to the end and next week because uh, he talks really really cool information um about capoeira region now that way we can understand what we do today and uh, some some of the tradition of capoeira region now thank you so much for listening please 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 share this episode with a friend and share and like it and subscribe okay thank you so much tune in and uh, listen it up What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep training. Keep loving Capoeira as much as, as the Capoeira community. And be part of this uh, beautiful community and be all together training and always showing up to class. And today I have a, a very special guest because uh, I've been very interested of, of uh, how, how pretty much our roots how, how we started, how pretty much uh, I like to understand uh, where we came from so that way we understand what we're doing now, right? Uh, and, and today I have a, a pleasure to introduce Professor Malandro. How are you doing, man, from uh, Philo G. Bimba? How are you doing? Doing all right. Doing great. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for making the time to, to share your experience and your knowledge with the, with the Capoeira community and... and uh, helping us uh, learning uh, to learn more from from especially coming from directly from the lineage for of Mr. Bimba and uh, right. so for people to find you to see to see you work to see where you are and all that stuff what is your social media so people can follow you oh for sure um people can find me uh my website is capoeira bay area.com and then that is going to be the same thing as far as uh instagram uh have a youtube channel um as well so and facebook nice so capoeira all one word capoeira bay area you google that and you will find us feel of shibimba nice nice perfect so if you if you're listening to this right now you go go ahead and and uh follow uh follow over there because he has a really cool information there uh i i've seen videos of like you know explaining the beating bow the how how mr bimba uh pretty much created his stuff uh his his information is, is really really cool uh also for people to to get to know you a little bit a uh, very short introduce uh, introduction of of yourself oh sure um well i started capoeira back in 1997 um nice. way back in michigan detroit michigan nice. um and then decided to move to the 
California Bay Area, um, okay. specifically for Capoeira. Um, That's so cool. Man. And yeah, I was around 19 years old, <laughs> and oh, wow. I just knew it. You know, maybe just at that age, a lot of other responsibilities didn't come into my head <laughs> at the time. But I just felt like, hey, I, I want to get good at this, and I need to be where the mess today is. Oh yeah. Um, in Michigan, uh, it was just kind of like the a student that was teaching. Um, so I decided to move to the Bay Area at 19. Uh, been here ever since. Uh, I've lived in Brazil um, for about a year and traveled to uh, Brazil annually because I feel like that's the Mecca, you know, oh, to yeah. Oh, really yeah. absorb the culture. Um, so you merge I, yourself like, yes. straight on, on, on the source. That's so cool, man. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, life is dedicated to capoeira, but also like what benefits it can bring to people, you know, cause For sure. there's a difference with like, oh, I'm just gonna be hardcore training. And then like, okay, what life lessons have I uh, experienced and how can I, you know, transmit that information to the youth or um, anyone, anyone? Yeah. Like how does capoeira make my life better? Besides just being a very physical, uh, physically capable capoeirista or just knowledgeable with like a great musician with capoeira like how can yeah. i better people's lives because it has made my life better um so yeah i've lived in brazil um travel back and forth uh, as much as i can and then i bring my teacher uh master um so cool, the states um like each year uh, god willing and everything so and yeah uh for anyone who like knows me i'm like all about uh the history um, all about like the legacy, because I feel like the more knowledge you have about something, the more value you will have uh, about it. And unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, there hasn't been too much information on a grand scale in comparison to a lot of other uh, segments of Capoeira about Capoeira Haitian. Like we know the name and we know yeah. Master Gimba, but um, not really is known um, about his work. Uh, about um, just like the legacy, you know, and yeah, about yeah, what is Capoeira Haitian now and how it's not a style. You know, you don't yeah. play Capoeira Haitian now. You can play Capoeira to Haitian now rhythms, you know, but if if you are like an Angoleto and uh, then you're playing Capoeira to a Haitian now rhythm, are you playing Haitian now or just playing your game to yeah. a rhythm that happens to be different than what you usually play? So, uh, hopefully, uh, what people will take away from this um, this interview, this podcast, this conversation, yeah, uh, yeah. just to understand more that there's more that connects us in Capoeira uh, than separates us, um, and that people understand more about really what Capoeira Haitian now is, yeah, yeah, why it's about, and also what it isn't, because a lot yeah. of times. Um, since there's not that much information, there's also room for misinformation about what Capoeira Haitian now is. And yeah, yeah. People started to like fight, you know, in the hodas and rolling on the ground and 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 doing that. They were like, "Oh, that's Capoeira Haitian now." It's like, you know. Yeah. Like, and unfortunately, there's there wasn't a reference at the time. Yeah. You know, after Master Yubima died, to kind of clarify things, but fortunately, you know, Master Yunel eventually stepped into that role. It was a process, but. Master Dina now his son, my teacher, yeah. stepped into that role. And now he's a reference, one of the references, not the only, but one of the references of Master Bimba's legacy and Capoeira Hejo now. And I'm just helping contribute and transmit the information as well. Which is, which is cool because that, that, that was my goal once, once. I think we got in touch a few months back mm -hmm. and uh, we never like actually set up the information. But when I started following you on, on Instagram, I was like, man, this is so cool. Because I never got a chance to, to, like I mentioned before, to talk to somebody that actually practice uh, uh, this from the source of Mr. Bimba, you know, and, and it is really cool because, yeah, we talk about the, the rhythms and the Mr. Bimba sequences and all stuff. Okay, but what is behind all the stuff, you know, and, and how, why Mr. Bimba created those and, and how Mr. Bimba created the, the, his graduation system in the school and all that. And I'm, I'm a very inquisitive person. So I'm always asking questions like how this works, how, why are we here? And why this was how it was uh, on, on that time. Yeah. So, so, and 
you you mentioned that you switch to to Mr. Bimba uh, or uh, Philos G. Bimba a while ago, right? Yes. Yeah, I started with um, Capoeira Manjinga, which is a okay. uh, contemporary school from the lineage of uh, Cordao Gioru, okay. um, under with Master Suasuna. Okay. Um, and Master Suasuna is the one who actually gave me my name, Malandro. Nice. Nice. Um, and uh, just at a certain point in my Capoeira path, um, because I personally um, am Black African American, I was researching my own roots. Um, and African Americans, uh, our roots have been cut off for so long. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted to research and see where my ancestry came. What was what was I connected to beyond slavery? Because usually with history, uh, with Black people, it starts with slavery. Like there yeah, was nothing yeah. grand also before that. So in my personal life, I did like DNA tests and things like that. Um, and uh, because Capoeira is, you know, my life also, I started to research the roots of um, Capoeira. Okay. So when I was living in Brazil, uh, I went to the Mecca, I went to Bahia, and um, I trained with different uh, Angola masteries. Uh, I trained at Master Jean Pequeno's Academy while he was still alive. Oh, so cool. I trained uh, at uh, Fica in Salvador, Bahia. Nice. I trained uh, with Master Jogo G. Dentro. Oh. Um, man, you, you trained with a lot of like like superstars in Capoeira, man. <laughs> Yeah, so cool. Uh, I mean, fortunately, like they're uh, they're just like at the bar, just you know, having a beer, and then they'll go like <laughs> teach class. So they're just like hanging out, you know, and you're just walking down the street and like seeing these really famous, uh, amazing, yeah. you know, couple of dudes. Um, and I'm highlighting the different segments, like because I don't like to say styles because when we say styles, that means like everyone plays exactly the same, and there's yeah. no creativity. Yeah. But I say like different lineages, different styles and things like that. Um, I like it. But uh, the reason why I'm pointing out Angola is so that it's conveyed that I'm not trying to promote one particular type of capoeira. You know, I'm going to speak on regional and what it, where it comes from, but I'm also uh, solidifying the fact that I research capoeira as a whole. I'm a capoeira nice. nerd. So I'm not here to just be like, regional hey, is the best. No. Yeah, I'm yeah, for sure. Everything is connected. Everything has similarities, um, and there's different things that make it unique. You know, not different, but just unique. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, eventually, also, I wanted to search Masri Nenel, who's the son of Masri Bimba, um, because I've seen him on various documentaries. For my favorite Capoeira documentary is uh, Caporajum na Bahia, um, and. Um, also countless Capoeira magazine. So I had a chance to go to Master Nenel's Academy in the Pelodium um, and, and play in the Hoda and nice. take some classes. And I played in the Hoda first, like my first experience uh, with Capoeira Regional in Bahia was the Hoda. And it was just different from what I expected and what uh, was told to me, like, you know, Regional is like more fast, upright, more aggressive flips and stuff. and. Um, I didn't see any of that. They, were, they played very close, like all their movements were, had an objective and, and you know, very efficient. Okay, um, with a purpose, right? Music. Say again? With a purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, not just kick to kick, yeah. Yeah, just like in the air and things like that, you know. Um, but it wasn't like aggressive um, or anything like that. I, I thought I was going to get punched, <laughs> but it was <laughs> Nothing like that, but also the music. The music was very soulful. So even when it was quote unquote like fast, like Samba to Granji, yeah. there was this different, there was this like swag, you know, to it. There yeah. was this like bounce to it. So and cool. um, the spectators, you know, there was a bench for people just to watch. And even they would just be like, you know, kind of swaying back and forth. And then like, so, nothing. so it was very soulful. I, I use that term. Um, see, like I'm getting like goosebumps. Just that's like so me. cool. Man. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, but, which. Uh, sorry to interrupt, and and yeah. we'll continue that part. Do uh, so you went to a school where I, I've seen the Capoeira Illuminada uh, mm -hmm. a few times, yes. and so you were to the school where Mr. Nenel is with it. I I believe he has three circles, right? Yeah. Yes, with a cobblestone ground. Yes, that yeah, was yeah. That's, so uh, cool, man. I I bet the energy was like was like legit. Very yeah, and like it so so full. The the students themselves were like. It was almost like a celebration, like, you know, so some, nice. some holidays, you know, people enjoy themselves, they sing, they clap, but then they, they were like, there was like, 
<laughs> you know? oh, yeah. like, um, and they were just having fun while like kicking and giving people hot status and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was just enjoying themselves and, and having fun. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh it was a great experience. So then that kind of solidified like, hey, I need to research like I need to research this more. And it wasn't like immediate I'm gonna join Phyllis G Bimba, but from there I was like, I'm gonna stay connected to them. So okay. I stayed connected to Master Nanel and also to Master Di Jogoji Dentro because I enjoyed how he plays, like this really tall guy, but then he would be able to shrink and play Kapoed Angola and not um, use his size and to like force uh, or dominate the game. Okay. Um, Cause uh, so cool. yeah, I just wanted to be like a chameleon. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna, when the beating ball plays. And that was another thing with the contemporary, it was like, oh, whatever the beating ball plays, then we, we just play, but there wasn't, for me, there wasn't a reference to be like, okay, here's the foundation, here's the etiquette, here's what you do and don't do, specifically with Capoeira Regional, with Angola, it was a little bit easier because we had so many um, references like Cobra, uh, Mestri Cobra Massa, Mestri, okay. uh, Mestri Moraes, you know, so many videos on VHS, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when we started, it was on VHS, yeah. Yeah, so so many visual references, at least, you know, yeah. to, but with Capoeira Regional, it was next to none. It was like, you know, if you saw some clips from Capoeira Regional Bahia, if you saw some clips from uh, Cap uh, Messi Bimba Illuminada, but even before that, it was just like uh, Vaiji Asao, you okay. know, um, the black and white one. And then, you know, not much else, like you can count on like, three fingers how much like footage of like what Capoeira has now you know from Master Bimba you know as a reference yeah and it loses with the time because and then uh he's, he's like so some people start passing the information and then some people adapt the information to them and then eventually who knows like what, what get lost during during yeah. all these conversations yeah, Mestri uh, João Pequeno is famous for quoting that Capoeira Regional went to the grave with Mestri Bimba. Oh, wow. Because, um, and Mestri Nenel says, like, you know, he, he wasn't upset with that phrase because it was very true at the time. Yeah. Because once Mestri Bimba passed away, he didn't groom anyone to be a student. He didn't groom anyone to teach. He just groomed people to be capoeiristas and better human beings, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so once he passed away in poverty, unfortunately, um, there was no one ready to kind of like take over the, the mantle. Like even Mestri Nanel went through a certain phase of like, okay, I'm gonna use three bidding bows and atabaki, okay, I'm gonna use belts. And uh, just, it didn't work for him. So he went through a process, which I really admire um, to be like, okay, I feel like this is the calling that I have, like, like to just preserve my father's work yeah. um, as best I can with respect, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and so once you came back to the, to the US and, and you uh, pretty much went formal under uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Phyllis Gibimba, so you you started like teaching all the methodologies and and yeah. beating about history and all that stuff. So what how how will you break down the methodology of Mr. Bimba? Uh, the methodology of Mr. Bimba is really cool because it's kind of there's structure balanced with freedom. So you cool. know, um, so for example, there's some clear cut things as far as the methodology. You you hold the hands of a beginner okay. and teach how to jingle by holding their hands. Um, then also uh, you teach all the basic, you know, kicks and escapes and things like that. But they, a student, one thing that's important uh, I feel to share is the student works with the sequencia and say just sequencia singular. It's not okay. sequencias, but the sequencia has eight parts. So um, the student learns the sequencia um, and then once they have, they don't have to have it perfect, but after a few classes, once they have like it down, um, then they have a bachizado. Oh, cool. So okay. The bachizado that was created by Master Bimba is just the first time that a student plays to the sound of the beating bow. No clapping, no singing oh. to the actual live, you know, beating bow. Because nowadays we have like iPods and, and 
Bluetooth and things like that. You know? <laughs> and I doubt in Massey Beaver's time somebody put on the record, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. while they're training. Let's go um, to play play number five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the, that's that's a bachizado. Um, okay. You used to say, você vai entrar no aço, or você vai cair no aço, you know, going to enter the steel, so to speak. Um, so the, the beginner will play with uh, an advanced student who knows that this beginner has limited vocabulary because okay. the, the sequencia is the ABCs of Capoeira Regional. Okay. So it's not a tradition for the student to be taken down. It's not a tradition for the student to get their butt kicked and, you know, thrown against the wall and stuff that you see in some holders. Yeah. Um, because the student hasn't even learned how to fall yet. Yeah, for sure. Well, so, yeah. uh, I think that's another point with Capoeira Regional is that the more advanced student is responsible for the physical and moral, moral uh, integrity of the more beginner. And that also goes with some of the um, principles of Capoeira Regional to obey the obey the rhythm of the beating bow. Um, all your movements need to have an objective okay. uh, to keep one base on the ground. So like all of the back Simao and mortals and things that's that doesn't have anything to do with the game of Capoeira Regional. Okay. Um, uh, play close to your partner. Um, always Jenga um, and always Esquiva. Nice. To uh, respect when your partner is defenseless and take care of your partner's moral and physical integrity. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't give them a cabezada or a hasted or a vingachiva, but it's never done to demoralize the other person and it's never done to injure the other person because if yeah. you you know, bumps and bruises and accidents happen, obviously. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Sport. But it's the intent behind it is never to hurt the other person to where they can't play Capoeira with you anymore. Yeah, or, they, or they're afraid to play it again, and, and right. especially beginners. Exactly. And yeah. I feel like that's a very important thing to highlight with the principles of oh, Capoeira Hegenau, because, again, with the misinformation, like, oh, Capoeira Hegenau is more aggressive and, um, you know, it's not... It's not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we we used to see uh, we. I think there is a mixed in between the the what is the capoeira here now, mm -hmm. and the and the capoeira contemporanea, right? Where yeah. where the adaptation of like more fast movement, more mm -hmm. uh, aggressive movement, more the take downs are more like I'm gonna take you down instead of like yeah. you know mm -hmm. I'm gonna take you down for just to have fun, or yeah. or for you to learn how to fall. And then it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, behind all those um, adaptations from the yeah. or evolution. If, mm -hmm. I don't think evolution would be the right way to, to say it, but the, the adaptation to to or the changes that Capoeira went through. Mm -hmm. And I think also with Capoeira Hejna, because Master Bimba himself had a specific vision uh, for his representation of Capoeira, because even in the same Capoeira schools, like groups, um, different masteries and in different teachers have a certain way that they run their holders or a certain way that they run their classes or yeah. a certain way that they run their promotions, um, yeah. even within the same school. Um, so that's why you get such different personalities. Like some people in the same school will be like, I'm a little bit like, just place it. You don't need, you don't need to take the other person. Another people because of what they've been through or what their, their personality, like, no, you need to be ready to take the person down, you know, at yeah. any time, you know, because if you don't, then other people won't respect or it's, people won't see. Yeah. And the last thing you want is to mark a takedown. The person didn't register and then they take you down because you held it, you know? So yeah. everything has like maybe a, a, a specific point of view. It's not like this person is just aggressive, but, you know, in their mind, they have a specific reason why they do this this way. And Master Beam is no different from any other a teacher, for example, like with Master Juan Pequeno and Juan Grandi, they're both famous students of Master uh, Pachinha, okay. but their beating bow setup is totally different. Like Juan Pequeno has his beating bows, um, I think, on the far left, and then Master Juan Grandi has his beating bows like in the middle, you know, okay. with the different instruments. So, uh, also, I bring that up because Angola is considered like the more traditional, but then yeah, yeah. People decide what their traditions are in their school, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But, I, uh, I remember. Uh, sorry, I, I remember um, um, 
Mestre Tony Vargas, where he mentioned on one of his songs that, you know, Capoeira has many truth that like nobody hold the, the real truth on their hands. And, and exactly. it's, I think it's, it's really powerful because like, that goes across the entire Capoeira community. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, that's more or less like the, the methodology, like the student has the bachizado. Nice. Then continue training. Then we have what's called the Fesaji Bachizado. And that's where it's just the Halda. And eventually the student who doesn't have a Noma Jigeha or a, or a nickname, that's when they receive their nickname. So it won't okay. be it won't be like just random, like in a at a restaurant or just hanging out after class. Oh, you like uh you like avocados, we're gonna call you avocachi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, or, you know, whatever thing like, oh, your shirt's red. So we're going to call you red shirt and things like that. Like yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a ceremony where the person receives their nickname. And generally we try to give nicknames that don't tease or make the person feel bad about it. We try to give nicknames that they feel proud, proud For of. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. And then, uh, then you have a formatura. And then you receive your the lensels. So Master Bimba didn't didn't create like a uh, belt system. I'm okay. trying to think, think of all like the the misinformation. He didn't create a belt system. He didn't create like capoeira uniforms. The only time really when the students wore white were these ceremonies oh, where they would okay. or performances. That was it. Like when you train, you just trained in your street clothes. You know. Oh, okay. Um, that's also why people trained like barefoot because at that time there weren't training shoes. Like they had their work shoes and they didn't want to bring in the dirt from outside. So then you would just train barefoot, you know? Oh, okay, cool. Um, so the white uniforms uh, happened because of, you know, just to have look presentable when doing a demonstration or, uh, you know, your Sunday best when there's a ceremony when you re receive your scarf uh, at your formatura or if you complete mm -hmm. other courses, okay. you know, so if you complete or when you complete your the basic course you receive a blue scarf when you complete the special the first specialization course that's when you get jumped in the forest and uh, in the emboscada okay that's when you receive your red scarf when you complete the weapons course weapons defense course that's when you receive your uh, yellow scarf and then when you have a master like the beating bow running the hoda and you know you know how to transmit uh the the legacy of master bimba then that's when you receive your white scarf oh cool okay it, i was about to, to ask you yes so he's, he's about like four labels yeah mm -hmm. oh cool i like that yeah. i like that thank you so much this was the first part of this interview next week will be the part number two where we talk way, way, way more about Capoeira Regional from Filios Chibimba with Professor Malandro, okay? Stay tuned for the next week episode to learn more about Capoeira Regional, right? Thank you so much. Peace out. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for getting this far. Remember, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook or YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is going to help us and help me to get bigger numbers and bigger subscribers so we can give more information, okay? Please, if you're listening, I know you're listening, I know you're watching, please give me a subscribe, give me a, give, give me a like, okay? I know you're watching right here or listening, all right? Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening every single episode, especially the episode we just did. All right. Thank you so much. Peace.